to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus Christ is presented as the true King of kings and Lord of lords. We're so glad that you joined us for our study today. If you don't have your Bible, we want to encourage you to locate it, have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God today to learn more about Jesus, the true King of kings. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether that be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. They would love to have you stop by and visit them. You'll find people there at the Lord's Church who love God, who are kind and friendly people, and who'd be happy to discuss God's Word with you in any way. If you've got a Bible question, you want to know more about the church or the plan of salvation or, or why we worship as we do, you'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down and open up God's Word with you with a kind and honest heart. Friend, we'd also love to help you in your journey to know God better here at the Gospel of Christ. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, you can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material free of charge. We have lessons on all the Old Testament books, New Testament books, wide variety of good topical studies as well, and it's all available free of charge. If you'd like to have a DVD or CD of today's lesson, just go to our website, fill out a free media request form. We'd be glad to give you an instant digital download of that, or we can mail to you a DVD or CD as well. And friend, in our fast-paced world where everybody seems to have a smartphone, check out the Gospel of Christ app available both in the Android and Apple stores for that. Today we're thinking about the initial opening words of the New Testament in the Gospel of Matthew, and we're so excited to think about Jesus as he's presented to the, to the Jewish people and to all men as the real King of kings and Lord of lords. Let me kind of set the stage of where Matthew falls in the New Testament itself. The New Testament is uniquely made up of four categories. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel accounts. And these tell us about who Jesus is. They tell us about his life. They tell us about his miracles. They, they give to us his preaching of the gospel, the many good works he did, and their crescendo or climax is his death, burial, and resurrection, the perfect life that he lived. Then that second category in the New Testament is the book of Acts. Acts tells us, now that you know who Jesus is and what he did, here's how you become a Christian. And so Acts is all about how to become a Christian. Then Romans through Jude, that third category, tells us about Christian living. Now that you're a Christian, how do you live faithfully to the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Then that fourth stanza, a stanza of victory is the book of Revelation, how to die victoriously and win the battle in Jesus Christ. And so in today's lesson, we're thinking about this section of the gospel accounts. And in it, we have four unique accounts of the one gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all of them provide a little different flavor, if we could use that word, to a different background of people. For example, Matthew is a Jew 
writing to Jews about the greatest Jew to ever live, Jesus, the King of the Jews. And, and, and Matthew, his purpose is to convince from the Old Testament scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah, help them see this is God's way of salvation. And so in the Gospel of Matthew, you will hear the words kingdom 55 times. Matthew talks about the kingdom of of God. That word kingdom was, was big in the Jewish mind for they were looking for God to restore the kingdom to the days of David or Solomon or something like that. But Jesus takes it even a step further. You hear the word kingdom of heaven 32 times. You'll hear the word king throughout the book. This is a royal regal gospel where Jesus and his kingdom is presented as the final, the ultimate kingdom of God to men. There's a key phrase you'll hear throughout the book of Matthew as well. And this kind of clues us in to the purpose of Matthew. And throughout the book, you'll hear the writer say that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet or something along those lines. Matthew's purpose is to take the Jewish reader back to his Old Testament scripture, take that prophecy and show its fulfillment in Jesus as the true Messiah. And so Matthew is a Jew writing to Jews about the greatest Jew to ever live, Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. And so we're going to think about in these initial first three chapters today, Matthew chapters 1 through 3, we're going to think about the birth of the king and Jesus' royal lineage and things leading up to his ministry. As we do that today, let's realize Matthew starts to the Jews by presenting Jesus as of royal lineage. That is, he has right to the throne of David because of his royal lineage or his pedigree. Uh, Matthew 1 verse 1 stresses to the Jews that Jesus has right to the throne and these promises. Listen to it again. Matthew 1 verse 1 says, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, now watch the tracing of the lineage, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham, of course, was looked at as the father of the Hebrew nation, and Jesus traces his genealogy all the way back to him. And then to David, the, 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 the first and one of the greatest kings, that, or one of the greatest kings they would think of, of the Davidic line, the seed was going to come. 2 Samuel 7, verse 12 through 14. And so this idea, again, takes us to the fulfillment of, of prophecy. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3, Genesis chapter 22 verse 18, Genesis 49 verse 10, to Abraham and his direct descendants it was said, of your seed I will bless all nations. Through your seed I will populate them as the sand of the sea. And Genesis 49 verse 10, the scepter will never depart from Judah. It is evident our Lord sprang out of Judah. The Hebrews writer says in Hebrews 7, and Jesus is of direct lineage of Abraham. And so when we think about this phraseology, the son of Abraham, we're talking about the man who was the, looked at as the father of the Jewish faith. Remember Genesis chapter 12? God said to Abraham in verses 1 through 3, I want you to leave your country Basically, pack up your belongings. Uh, when you get it all ready, I'm going to tell you where you're going. I want you to go there. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. And we go back to Abraham. You've got Isaac. You've got the 12 tribes. You've got Joseph. You've got that lineage and showing the growth and power of the Hebrew nation. And so we see that promised blessing. Genesis 12. Then to Isaac, in Genesis 22, verse 18, In your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. And, and, and every Jew held that promise near and dear to his heart. They took it to mean if you were of Jewish lineage, you were a descendant of Abraham, God was going to bless you. But that really came to fruition 
in Jesus. Galatians chapter 3 verses 14 through 17 tells us, In your seed, who is Jesus Christ? He was the ultimate fulfillment of that promise. And so to Abraham, You've got the father of the Jewish nation. You've got that promised blessing that was given by God. And then when you think of Abraham, James 2.23 says, Abraham was a friend of God. Jesus is of that lineage, that pedigree, and that royal line as well. Then we hear the writer say that Jesus is the son of David. Of course, David was looked at as the greatest king to ever live. Acts chapter 13, uh, verse number 22. Acts chapter 2, though, says, even David calls the Messiah Lord. And so Jesus, being of the lineage of David, he's not just the lineage, he's also the God, the Lord of David, according to Acts chapter 2. Uh, David, to David, the great promise was made that the Messiah would come through his lineage. I want you to listen to the words of the promise made to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and, and hear what God said to one of the greatest kings ever to live about the Messiah, his lineage. Listen to verse 12. God says, When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And so David receives this great promise about the Messiah, the seed coming, uh, going to come through David, going to bless the Israelite nation. He's going to have an eternal kingdom. Well, who is that? Solomon? Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. His name will be called Great. The Son of the Lord God highest, of His kingdom there'll be no end. He is of the lineage of David. That promise is also fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And so initially, Matthew begins by bringing up these two great figures, Abraham and David. And he says, Jesus is the fulfillment of both of these promises. But you know, when you look at the genealogy of Christ, there are some names in there that really we wouldn't necessarily think would be in there. I understand Abraham, David, some of the others that are in there, but then you come across two unique women. Rahab and Ruth are both in the lineage of Jesus, and these are of Gentile background. But what's great about these women is they are both great women of faith, in Almighty God, and they both submitted to the Lord, and He used them. You've got Rahab who, who hid the spies when everybody else was living in idolatry, so much so that God is going to bring down His wrath on the, the uh, Jericho and the people there. Rahab has the faith to go against the grain, hide those spies, put that cord, that scarlet cord in her, in her door where they'll see that. And then, of course, you've got Ruth, the Moabite, who stays with Naomi, wherever you go, I'll go, your people be your people, your God, my God. And God worked through both of these women of Gentile background to bring his son into the eternal kingdom. And so while he wants to emphasize Jesus' lineage to the Davidic and Abraham line, we also realize God used ordinary. God used people that we might not hold up necessarily like others to work his plan. And so God can use all of us if we'll be faithful in his kingdom. Now, one of the things Matthew emphasizes that most Jews were probably familiar with is that Jesus is the Messiah because of his virgin birth. I want you to hear the words of Isaiah chapter 7 with me. And, and Matthew makes this a big starting point in the gospel. Listen to the promise and the prophecy in Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself, God says, will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. Well, did that happen? 
That's the promise. The, the Messiah is coming. He's going to be born of a virgin. That'll be a sign for you to recognize. Listen to Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 22. So all this was done, here's that key phrase, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, bear a son, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. How, do these, how are these Jews going to know? How can we be sure today Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world? Over and over, not just once, not just hit one and miss, no. Every time Jesus fulfilled prophecy exactly at his birth, he was born of a virgin, Mary, God, caused that to happen, and just like the prophet said, so it came true, trying to convince these Jews and us as well. Jesus truly is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. But you know that, that word in Isaiah 7 and in Matthew 1, 22 and 23, there's a unique word there, Emmanuel. That takes us to the incarnation of Jesus. And by that we mean that God, Jesus came in human form, but He is God with us. You see, Jesus is God. God's, in the beginning, God said, let, listen to this, let us, not me, or my, let us make man in our image. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, He is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him. And without Him, nothing made that was made. Well, well who is that Word? John 1, 14 says, And we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That Word is Jesus Christ. And so we're not just talking about a unique and amazing thing, the virgin birth. Jesus is Emmanuel. God is came in human form in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, friend, I want you to think, as we think about these initial few chapters, and as Matthew lines out how Jesus truly is the Messiah, in Matthew chapter 2, we have the, the birth of Christ presented, as you might imagine, according to prophecy. And there are four prophecies in Matthew 2 that Jesus fulfills in every detail. Micah chapter 5, verse number 2, it was said where Jesus would be born. And watch what is said in Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Look down to Matthew chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and now he quotes Micah 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And so Matthew now is going to line up these prophecies to show you can't get around the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. He was, number one, he was born in the exact place that your prophets, the Old Testament prophets, said the Messiah would come. Secondly, in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, God prophesied through the minor prophet Hosea that God's son would have to take a detour to Egypt for a time. Listen to Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, as it comments on that idea. The Bible says, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod. Now watch this. That it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. And so you've got that second prophecy. 
the Messiah, God's son, is going to be called up out of Egypt. Now a third prophecy Matthew deals with as it relates to the birth of Jesus. Jeremiah 31 verse 15 prophesied that during this time something dark was also going to happen and that was going to be the slaughter of the innocent. And we remember reading about that. Look in Matthew chapter 2 verses 16 following. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which had been determined from the wise men. Now watch. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted because they are no more. And so you've got along this same time frame that there was going to be a slaughter of the innocents. And then Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Fourth prophecy, fulfilled in Matthew 2, verse 23, there we hear these words that Jesus would be called a Nazarene. And so Matthew takes all these Old Testament, this, there's such great logic, and you can see his intent here. If I'm going to help these Jews who need salvation to realize Jesus is the Messiah, I've got to prove it to them from the Old Testament Scripture. And he lays out through the book. Scripture after Scripture after Scripture that Jesus perfectly fulfills. Then in Matthew chapter 3, we've got the introduction of John the Immerser, great servant of God. John preached an urgent message of repentance. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2, he was that, that lone voice crying in the wilderness, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. He told them plainly, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. John was not that old reed out there shaken by the wind. John stood firmly for the truth. And ultimately, it would cost him his life. We read about that in Mark chapter 6. But John was a great servant of God, preaching a great message of repentance. And friend, these people needed to change their hearts and turn to Jesus just like men and women do today. Jesus preached it. Luke 13 verse 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Peter preached it. Acts 3 verse 19, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Friend, if people today are going to accept the gift of God's salvation through Jesus the Messiah, there has to be a change of heart. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. And then in Matthew chapter 3, another pivotal point that we see is the baptism of our Lord and Savior by John. Look in Matthew chapter 3 beginning in verse 16 with me. The Bible says, When Jesus had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so not only... Do you have Jesus connected to David and Abraham? Not only do you have every scripture in the Old Testament lining up perfectly with him as the Messiah, you've got the authoritative, commanding, powerful voice of God echoing down from heaven saying, this is him, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And so Matthew lines up evidence after evidence after evidence for men to realize Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, we must submit to Him. And friend, isn't that same message so well needed today? We've got to realize if, if I believe the Bible, I believe the Bible is God's Word, I can't help but recognize Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man 
comes to the Father except by Him. John 14, verses 1 through 6. He is the only way. He's the door. John chapter 10. He's the gate. You can't get to God without going through the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus Christ. And so, friend, we ask you today, have you submitted your life to the true Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who is anointed by God to be the Savior of the world? You will call his name Jesus, Matthew says. He will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 19 through 21. Have you been saved from sin? Have you let Jesus into your life so that you can obey the gospel and become a Christian? If not, friend, we're begging you today. Submit your life to Jesus Christ, and I promise you, your life will be richly blessed spiritually, and no matter what happens in this life, you'll know on the other side all is well with your soul. You say, well, what do you mean submit to the Lord Jesus Christ? How do I become a follower of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, friend, you've got to recognize what Matthew's trying to help people recognize today, that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Do you believe that He's the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, You'll surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse 24. Would you do what Jesus and John and the New Testament teachers taught today? Would you repent of sin? Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Would you make that great confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. And to get into Christ, just like Jesus was baptized in the New Testament to fulfill all righteousness, today we are baptized to have our sins washed away and to get into Christ. Would you do what Peter said in Acts 2, 38? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. We hope you'll join us next time as we think more about Jesus as the King of kings and Lord of lords from the wonderful gospel of Matthew. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your smartphone.